Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk to you about how I save as a minimalist and vice versa, how being a minimalist has helped to save me a lot of money. Before I start, I just wanna give a background on what my personal financial situation is. I have a ton of debt, student loan debt from attending a four-year private university on the East Coast. I live in a roughly $3,000 apartment in San Francisco with my partner and we split the rent. I work uh, at a public university um, full-time. I personally invest around $300 in a Roth IRA, around $300 in a robo-investment account, and then I save around $400 per month. So in total, not a lot of savings, but not a small amount of savings either. My student loan debts are obviously increasing in interest, but I have the exact date of when my loans will be paid off in the back of my mind at all times so that I can actually come up with a very good plan on how to tackle them. So I would break up the spending categories into three sections groceries, transportation, and leisure activities. I shop for two people and we eat most of our meals at home. We eat out about four to maybe five times a month, plus maybe get coffee like four to five times a month. And when we do eat out, we try to get the most authentic experience from that meal but that doesn't mean that we order like an appetizer and an entree and drinks and dessert that's not what we do when we get coffee we don't get like the most expensive thing we do get oat milk but that's like mandatory these days so i do try to limit how much i'm actually eating out while still exploring the city sometimes i even share plates with friends just to still get the experience that i want without having to break the bank. So those are ways that I'm able to still explore living in a fun city like San Francisco while still maintaining a budget. The second area is transportation. I personally don't have a car and I don't really feel like I need to have one in the city. Whenever I wanna take long trips somewhere, we either use a friend's car or if I don't have a friend that has a car, then I take Zipcar. Um, and there's also a lot of other companies in San Francisco that have like car sharing apps. So if I ever need to get out of the city, which is quite frequently, then I can just take a car, but it's a lot cheaper than having to pay for parking in the city, which sometimes can be upwards of 300 bucks a month. And then also I don't have to worry about someone breaking into the car. So overall, not having a car, which is a massive expense, has really saved me a ton of money. The flip side is that it can be really easy to take Ubers and lifts across the city right now, obviously during the pandemic, I've been doing a really great job of not taking any Ubers or Lyfts and just really opened my eye up to how much I'm actually willing to walk. And so that's kind of a nice reminder that, you know, a 30 minute walk, a mile and a half is actually no big deal when you really think about it. Like you can afford that mile and a half walk as long as it's not at night. Um, I feel co perfectly comfortable doing that. When my um, East Coast friends visited San Francisco, I remember how much they complained about having to walk everywhere. And I realized that people in other cities don't really walk, but everyone in San Francisco loves to walk everywhere. We love to ride bikes. That's just our preferred method of transportation. And there's a good reason why. It saves you a ton of money. It's good for the environment. And it's um, good to see the city in that way. I know it's not always possible for everyone to live optimally in their in their city or wherever they're, they're living. Um, we try to live close to grocery stores so that we don't have to drive to a grocery store. I completely understand that that's not possible for everyone, but if you're ever looking to move, it's worth considering how close you live to the things that you need the most on a week, week to week basis. So like things like a grocery store are really important things like doctor's office, being kind of walking distance to a doctor's office, being walking distance to like a FedEx or USPS or UPS store. Uh, walking distance to any sort of convenience store where you can buy things that you might need quickly is very beneficial if you want to save money on transportation costs. Also living near a grocery store inherently kind of limits how much you're going to buy at the grocery store because if you can only carry so much then for lack of better words you won't get carried away. So the final category is leisure. And this is very variable for person to person because everyone has different interests that 
cost a different amount. My personal activities don't actually cost anything. The things that I enjoy doing actually don't require me to spend any money at all. And I'm fortunate to live in a city where there's so much to do that's entirely free. But when I do have to spend money, I actually just really like going to Whole Foods and Trader Joe's. Like those places are so fun. They have so many fun things there. And I know that sounds kind of sad, but it's honestly like a kid in a candy store when I go to Whole Foods and Trader Joe's. Like that place can get really out of hand <laughs> very quickly. Um, so I set myself a budget of about 200 bucks a month. And that also includes eating out. So I know that seems like a lot of money, but for a month to month basis, spending on leisure activities it's not a lot when you're living in a city where people go out for drinks and people go out for dinner and people are shopping all the time it's a pretty meager amount sometimes i'm under it sometimes i'm over it but having a solid number in which i can try to stick to ment mentally per month is very beneficial for me in the long term so that being said i actually don't spend any money on things that i don't really really care about so i don't really care about getting coffee when i go out with friends so oftentimes i'll just get like a tea which is so much cheaper than coffee or like just lemon water because there are things that i personally care about spending my money on and so i'd rather save my budget for those things you know so i really like spending money on like sustainable clothing. So that's something I'm working on of whether I even need those things, but I'd rather spend my monthly budget on purchasing like something that I genuinely would love to have versus something that would give me very transient happiness, if you know what I mean. So all in all, my expenses are very minimal. I've given myself a weekly budget. At the grocery store, we stick to a very minimal budget when I'm shopping for two people. Each expense everyone has, it's gonna be really individual, but if there's one piece of advice that I would give to you, it's that you should take care of the important stuff first, out of the way, those are non-negotiables. Rent, utilities, um, any bills, those things have to happen first. The second thing that has to happen is saving. Any remaining money that you have has to go to savings. But what I will say is you should absolutely leave yourself some spending money every month because Giving yourself that spending power is quite motivating. It makes you feel content with both saving and also being able to spend. So you don't feel like you're really missing out on life because if you want to enjoy something, you don't have to feel bad about it because you've already allocated money to save. And that feeling of having spending power, but also saving is really motivating to stick to a budget and something that has personally worked out really well for me. Saving any amount of money will help you feel financially secure and will also allow you to live a very comfortable life now and also in the future should you need um, any extra cash coming in. So that's all I have for you all today. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.